Hey folks, Bardo here. You know, Forge of Empires is changing quickly. This thing called power creep, it is in full effect for sure. It's affecting the value of our great buildings and maybe, maybe they're not so great anymore. It certainly is affecting some more than others. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna discuss the top five great buildings that are most vulnerable to power creep and the top five that are least vulnerable to power creep. Here we go, let's do it. Hello, 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 and good day to thee. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I really appreciate you giving it a chance. Now, first of all, before we get into anything, what an amazing week it has been. Um, a week ago, I posted a video that was about the tool FOE Info. Um, you know, this was something that I really wanted to talk about. I, I knew it was a powerful tool, but the response that I've had has absolutely blown me away. I'm, I'm really flabbergasted about it. I think one day this week, um, it was the number one video in the United States, according to tubelab.net, which, I mean, holy smokes. I mean, I, I'm, just, you know, I'm just a dude that loves the game. I love to talk about the game. I thought I would try a small channel, and the next thing you know, six weeks later, I have the number one video on Forge of Empire. So I'm very humbled by this. So thank you. I mean, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I feel like I can't put out a new video this week without talking about quantum incursions, right? I mean, this, you know, the brand new feature that just started this past Thursday morning. Uh, I don't know what your experience has been like so far, but in trying to prepare for this, like I watch the videos ahead of times that, that are out there. I watch them and I'm like, I, 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 this is not resonating with me. I, I guess I just need to do it first. So, you know, eight o'clock Thursday rolls around, you, you fire it up and uh, same thing. Like I was lost. Like, I don't know what in the world I'm doing. Now the videos made a little bit more sense, um, you know, once you do start doing things and then you go back and watch the videos it's kind of like with the when we have new events you know um and and you watch a video that kind of explains it and it's like okay i, I, don't, I don't get it yet um i found the same thing here now one thing i found really really interesting it, it just seems to me that the manual fighting that's that's really kind of required this is so much more interesting and so much more challenging right so different than the experience of gbg you know, where I'm, I'm used to, you know, fighting 30 fights a minute, you know, using auto battle and just, you know, click, 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 click. I, I feel like it's kind of similar to the, the rival quest that was in this last uh, St. Patrick's Day event. It really, it really feels like the game developers are, you know, implementing new elements of the game that just require more thinking, right? Require us to be a little bit more patient. I mean, I think we found that with the uh, the quad, uh, you know, quest that we're going along with the rival there, and and this too. I think this causes us this causes us to slow down just a little bit and to think more, you know, involve more strategy. So in that way, I think it's going to be a really cool thing. I think we're going to have to be patient with this, right? Like I. I think we're gonna need to be patient in actually playing it and also kind of be patient with learning um, how all of this works because I still, I mean, I'm figuring out a little bit, but I think it's gonna take a while. The basic idea that I'm, I'm really just trying to get my head around is really just three main things. One, you know, build up your city, uh, just get it working as efficiently um, as, as you possibly can in its current state, then, once you've kind of done that, then you can take your actions on the map and then you're just kind of, I kind of see it as just going back and forth. Like, okay, you know, it takes a while, 10 hours to, um, to, you know, to, uh, to kind of capture, uh, all of your supplies and all of that, that you're earning, but then just upgrade your buildings and you're just, I, I see it as going back and forth. But to be completely honest, I, I just really do not have my head around this brand new feature just yet. I, so I just wanted to share some initial thoughts. I'm really looking forward to what you're thinking about it. It seems like the initial um, comments on you know Discord and Reddit, um, it just seems like people are either really liking it or they're really not liking it. So, so what do you think? I mean, share your thoughts on that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, call the neighbors and wake the kids. It is time for the hot tip of the week. 
Now, have you ever suddenly realized that you have enough selection kits or something to build a fully leveled event building? Have you ever found yourself like looking through your inventory here and you're like, you know, gosh, what all do I have? Like, what could I actually build? Because there's so much stuff in here. I mean, look, you've got all your event selection kits. You've got your, you know, uh, your, you know, your level ones and you know, just trying to figure this out can be a super confusing situation. Well, the FOE Helper has a really great um, little tool down here. It's the Sets, Upgrades, and Kits uh, little element here, and I love it. When you open it up, you can see exactly what you have in order to build any of these different things. So, for example, the, the Celtic Tavern here. You can see, um, well, I've got two level ones, which, by the way, I need... I, have you guys noticed this? Like we do these events and somehow we end up with two level ones and we're like, man, that sure would have been nice if that would have been an extra upgrade kit instead of an extra level one. Because if it was, then I would have six here. And as you can see right up here, this shows you exactly what you need in order to, um, to you know, to, to, <laughs> to fully level it. Um, but that's what I love about this is it, it just makes it very, very clear exactly where you're at with everything. Um, you can see in my case here, I'm just, I, I need one more of these upgrade kits um, and I need 10 more fragments of this. I need 60 more fragments of this um, and then I'm going to be in really good shape for my second um, Celtic Tavern. But, you know, as you scroll down here and you see, you know, all of these different things, here's another great example, the Druid Hut. Okay, I'm in good shape and I could actually drop um, a, a what would actually be my third sacred arch druid hut um, because I've got enough upgrade kits plus um, the druid upgrade kit was one of the things that you could choose in the St. Patrick's Day selection kits so between all of these things and you can see here's what the requirements are I have enough so it's just a really really great way especially when again when you've got something like the saint patrick's day selection kit which you can actually you know kind of use it for so many different things it's just nice to be able to have a clear way to look at that and figure out um, what is your best way to utilize those sorts of kits so um, great tool um, hopefully that's helpful to you okay but now before we get into the main content of this video I just would like to invite you to consider subscribing to my channel. I mean, if you like Forge of Empires as much as I do, if you play the game regularly, then hopefully you'd find some value in seeing my videos on a regular basis. I mean, truly, a sub from you means more than you realize. Okay, let's get to the main content of today's video. Now, depending on how long you've played Forge of Empires, the effects of power creep will be either more or less obvious to you. It seems to me over the last year, perhaps maybe, well, especially in the last six months, this power creep thing, I mean, it's become really profound. And honestly, like I haven't been too concerned about it overall because everything is relative when it comes to new event buildings, right? Like, I, and, and I totally see the need for the developers to come up with new event buildings that are better and more appealing and more interesting. You know, we kind of need that carrot dangling in front of us to keep ourselves interested in the game. But to me, where it really gets interesting though, and, and maybe somewhat problematic is in relation to great buildings. Now, I'll probably do an entire video sometime soon on power creep in general. This video, though, really is more specific to power creep as it relates to the value of our GBs. So for those of you that have been playing a while, right? I mean, years ago, great buildings were just that. Great. I mean, they were great. These were intended to be powerhouse buildings that were definitely worth the massive forge point investments that we were making then, right but now so many of them are just kind of mediocre buildings with these amazing new event buildings coming out a lot of the great buildings they're just they're okay i mean you know and some of them are are not nearly as good i noticed a recent discussion on discord and i thought the comments there were super interesting i handpicked a few out um, to share with you so check these out it's becoming an era of leveling only a few major great buildings a lot and then just ignoring the rest 
and then this person. Up to now, there were really two ways to improve your city. One, push the GBs. Two, play events. With the powerful new event buildings, we need a rebalancing of the great buildings, or the first option is out, and it all depends on the events. That's probably what I know is going for. And then finally, this person said, I agree that most grade buildings are becoming useless. The big question is, if we don't level GVs, what are we going to do with all those forge points? I think these are really great comments. So what, what I wanted to do with this video is just share what I believe are the top five most vulnerable great buildings to this power creep and the top five least vulnerable to power creep. In other words, which buildings have seen their values drastically reduced by power creep and which ones are withstanding the storm of power creep and perhaps even becoming even more valuable. Now, before I share these lists, I do have three really quick things I want to mention. First of all, all 10 of the buildings you're going to see are buildings that I do have in my own city. I mean, to me, it wouldn't make any sense to include buildings that I don't even own and I don't know what the real cost and benefits are of having. The second thing is this list is based on my experiences. I mean, this is my list, right? Um, I know not everyone's going to agree with me. I certainly don't expect that, but that, that is the beauty of this game is we all have our own experiences, our own play styles. I have developed this based on my own experience with the game and, of course, with talking to others. And then lastly, you know, it would be really stupid if I just provided a list of just some crappy GBs, right? <laughs> Every one of the great buildings that I'm going to mention in both categories are and have been some of the most significant GBs in the game. So without further ado, here are my lists. Now, I'm going to start with the five great buildings that I believe are the most vulnerable to power creep. Now, number five, I'm starting off with a really significant one that comes in at number five. I'm going to say it is the Traz. Now, why is it on this list? I mean, I know I'm going to get a lot of pushback for this. Uh, a lot of people think, you you know, a Traz is a must-have, and, and it has been for so long. But here's why it's made the list. Number one, it's absolutely enormous. I mean, it's the largest building in the entire game at 7 by 10. So it's taking up 70 squares. Now, I'm sure you guys have noticed a lot of the newer event buildings that are coming out are pushing out fairly significant amounts of troops. I mean, I collected my city today, I, ch I tallied it up. I received 57 units just from collecting my city today. I mean, they came from the Vibrant Sunflower Oil Press, the Majestic Winter Wonderland, Cider Gardens, Donkey Enclosures. I mean, there's a bunch and it added up to 57. You wanna know how many I get from my Traz at level 61? I get 59. Now granted, with my Traz, I get to pick which troops I'm getting. So that's a big, big thing. But the fact of the matter is I've got an enormous building here. It's not giving me any military boosts. And yet, you know, I'm, I'm getting plenty of other troops in some other ways. Now, here's one thing too. If you already have built up an enormous amount of troops, then clearly your Traz is even less valuable. Um, and then by the way, did I mention that the thing is absolutely huge? So look, I'm I'm not going to get rid of it. I, I am not going to get rid of it. I do think it would be a mistake, but I'm telling you, with the size of this building, it comes in on my list at number five. Now, number four, I'm going to go with my Cathedral of Aiken down here. Um, look, it's the only building that you're going to see on this list that's in the Trinity, um, but it's a large building, and I don't know about you, but I'm not noticing too many players in the game that are hurting for coins. I mean, it gives you coins and it gives you the military boost. But I just don't think the coins are enough to save it. I think it, I think it leaves it in a little bit of trouble. Coming in at number three on the list, I've got my beautiful Himeji castle over here. Um, I remember back when, and it doesn't seem like that long ago, when you would get the 200 point forge point bonus um, from the spoils of war. I mean, it, I remember the first few times I got it, I thought, man, this is like too good to be true. This is so awesome. But now, like if you compare it down here, look, look at my, uh, look at my Tower of Champions. 
I mean, I get 48 just from that. And so when you double that with the blue galaxy, it comes in at 96. So basically almost every day I'm getting half of that from a building, you know, that's just in, in my city. And so it just goes to show, you know, the 200 point huge reward that, you know, that you can get with the Himeji. It just doesn't mean as much anymore. And it's a pretty expensive building and it's a pretty good size. Coming in at number two, I'm down here with my cape, right? Same basic type of thing. I mean, we all know the cape, the only thing it gives you is forge points, no military bonus. And again, I, you know, you can get forge points, look, from my vibrant sunflower oil press. Okay, I get 35 from it. If it gets doubled by the blue galaxy, then I get 70 from it. And then you look at what I get from the cape at 71. So again, same exact thing. But that puts the cape in jeopardy. And then finally, I know a ton of people. And these are even folks that go through GE5. But I know a ton of people who are saying, you know what? The Templar Relics, it just isn't worth having in your city anymore. It's a big 5x5 five five building. Obviously, you get a lot of things when you go through the um, GE5. But man, I mean, you're getting a bunch of crappy buildings that, okay, you can dump them into AD, but same thing there. You're not, you're not, you're not getting much in exchange for what you're um, getting in the antique dealer. So, so, so here we are. Here's the entire list. So again, we've got the Traz, we've got the COA at number four, we've got the Meji Castle at three, the Cape is at two, and the Temple of Relics is coming in at number one. Okay, now we're going to finish up with the good news. Here are my top five least vulnerable grade buildings to power creep. Okay, we're going to start off, you know what, we're going to look at the data. We're going to look at the data for this one. I'm going to come in at number five with my Zeus. Now, let's open up the FOE helper, the building efficiency rating, and we're going to go scroll all the way down. Of course, this what this does, this ranks my buildings according to the variables that I think are most important. And check it out. The fourth highest number here is my Zeus. So after all this time, and even though the only thing it does is it gives me military boosts, my tiny little Zeus, after all this time, it is my number four most efficient building. So it is absolutely on my list of being safe and, and least vulnerable. I'm going to come in number four with my Chateau Frontenac. Now, I love my CF. Um, most people who know me and know how I like to play this game, my CF is my second favorite great building. It's because I use it to do so many of the recurring quests. Um, interestingly enough, when I was first thinking about this, these two lists, man, I started to put the CF on my most vulnerable list. I felt like, you know what, as much goods as we're getting from some of the other buildings now, as many goods as we can get from, from GBG, maybe getting them through recurring quests isn't quite as powerful. But then I stopped, I thought about it for a day or so, and I thought, no, the CF has got to be on my list of least vulnerable. Because if you go through the recurring quest and you just take a look at how many goods and other supplies and all that sort of thing that you're getting from this thing. And again, here's the thing. I should have pointed this out from the beginning. My CF is a level 130. Now I realize for folks, <laughs> you know, most folks probably don't have a 130 CF. And so if yours is low and you have no intention of building it up, then I could see where definitely it might be pretty vulnerable for you. But for me, it is very safe because I have pumped a lot into this thing but every single time I collect, I get 43 goods through the recurring quest. Now, coming in at number three, I've got to say it's the Blue Galaxy. Now, this bad boy, I think, is actually increasing in value because as we get more and more of these event buildings that are putting out massive resources, the fact that they get doubled with a Blue Galaxy just makes it even more valuable. So definitely the Blue Galaxy Again, mine is a level 91, okay? So I get a 70% chance it's doubled. But for me, that, that makes this building tremendously valuable and even more than it was before. 
Okay, now coming in here at number two, I gotta go with my AO. I love my AO. You can see it's a, it's a level 130. So I get a 39.07% chance of a of 1.5 damage. Now let's just let's look at the math on this for a second. Now, you know maybe a year ago an event building attack boost of 22. In fact, I think that's what my bistro is. Look, yeah, my bistro. It comes in at 22%. Okay, so if you if you do that times 1.5, then the attack would be 33, which is an increase of 11. But nowadays, you know, we just recently got the um, the Serene Flamingo Paradise. Okay, look at what the look at what the attack is on that. It's 46. So an AO would make it 69. So an increase of 23. So you're talking about, you know, comparing the benefit of an AO going from an increase of 11 to an increase of 23. That's more than doubled. So that goes to show right there. The value of the AO, it's not decreasing, it is increasing. So it is coming in at number two, very safe on this list. Okay, and so here we are at number one. Now it's probably no surprise to you, number one on my list has got to be the ARC. I mean, the ARC is the key. It is still the king. It has been for a long time. I think it still will be for a long time. It really requires really little explanation as to why mine is a 166 and i realize most people don't have a 166 but the fact that if you build this thing up it can generate massive amounts of forge points and that is the currency of this game that is the main currency and so anything that can give you that level of wealth of forge point wealth then it's it, you know it's safe now I will say this, I will say that, if the whole point of the art is to generate forge points to level your GBs with, but if GBs are less important than they used to be, then logic says that inherently the value of the art starts to dip a little bit. But, but nonetheless, the art is king and it is number one. So quickly, counting them down, I've got the Zeus at five, CF at four, the Blue Galaxy at three, the AO coming in at two, and the Arc down at number one. So it's just, it's gonna be interesting to see how this power creep dynamic will impact this game going forward. I mean, I, I you know, I, I'm a little worried about some things. Um, I, I don't know. I, we, it, it's only, um, time will tell. Time will tell. This game used to be, it doesn't seem like long ago, it was a, like a long-term marathon type of game. And that that really feels like it's changing. I mean, it's this game in the last year, I mean, it went years and didn't change much. But in the last year, this game has changed a lot. Now, if you ask me, it's a great time for new players to start playing, right? Because they're not, they don't have that historical context. Great time for new players to start playing. But for those, I think, that have been playing it a while, I think they are probably have a tendency to be a little bit more concerned. Um, so it's just, it's going to be fun to see. Nonetheless, we're all going to be faced with, you know, we're, we're going to adapt. We're going to have to adapt. We're going to change our cities um, as needed. And that, that, that in itself makes the game interesting. So uh, on that note, we're going to wrap things up for this particular video. Thanks for hanging in there. A lot of information, a lot of stuff packed in. I thought about splitting this up into two, but I think, you know, putting, putting this all in one uh, was, I think, the way to go. I really appreciate you watching, sticking around for this entire video. And again, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear your reaction and your thoughts about how you feel power creep has affected the value of your GBs. So as always, until next time, forge on my friends, forge on.